Good afternoon. This is Samantha Jones anchoring from home this evening or this afternoon, I should say. Uh, about this time every day, News 4 wants to kind of bring you a good Facebook Live to answer some of the questions that you may have as we're all working through this COVID-19 pandemic. The other day we talked about e-learning. Today, we're going to again focus on kids and parents, this time specifically about some of the issues your children may be having dealing with the stress of the outbreak. So I want to bring in Dr. Eric Spiegel. He's a pediatric psychiatrist at St. Louis Children's Hospital. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, so I think a lot of people may not think that kids can feel stress the way that adults do. Um, I want to do take some of the questions from people from Facebook Live. So while I get that pulled up, will you kind of walk us through the different ways that children can show stress? Well, uh, kids are uh, real anxiety sponges. And so I think one of the ways that um, uh, our younger kids are knowing that this situation is stressful is probably through their parents. Obviously, most of the kids in the St. Louis area right now are at home and they know that something's amiss, something's unnatural. Um, some of them may enjoy up until a point not going to school. Uh, many of them are doing e e-learning, like it sounds like you did a, a, a talk on that. Um, but the um, it's it's probably unusual at this point that there's not something stressful going on or anxiety provoking going on in their parents' lives. Um, and so um, that can show itself in kids in a variety of different ways. Kids can get kind of angry or irritable. Uh, other kids can get more withdrawn. Um, but uh, I think that uh, one of the first things that parents probably need to do is look at how, our, how they are managing this current situation. And then what kinds of messages are they kind of sending to their kids based on how they're uh, um, sort of handling this crisis and what sort of implicit and explicit messages are they sending to them about it? Okay, so then I guess my next question would be, what advice do you have for parents when they're explaining to their kids what's going on? Well, I think probably the first thing to do is to ask the kids what they already know, ask what they're thinking about it, what their worries are, and what their feelings are, and trying to validate them. Um, there's not really a way to predict what your child is thinking about what's currently going on. As I mentioned, some kids may be uh, enjoying the break from the stresses of school. Some kids may be overwhelmed with anxiety. Others may be uh, not that anxious because their main uh, anxiety has to do with being around other kids. So um, just checking in with them emotionally, first of all, to see how they're feeling and, and to validate those feelings. But then also, what do they know? What do they understand? Um, um, probably the most important thing um, is the supervision of kids at home and making sure that they're staying at home. Um, but I, I think that depending upon how young the children are, the less they probably understand some of these uh, personal distancing recommendations and why those things work and, and what those are all about. It, but um, I, I think breaking those things down to a level that your individual children can understand, it may be happening in this online learning uh, already. So they may know some facts that they could teach you. Yeah, and I think too, I have to just let you know right now, I've got two iPads and one in each hand and a cat that decided he wants to be on my lap. This is, these are the joys of being at home. You have to get down, thank you. Um, so mm -hmm. while we're talking about kids and explaining to them um, kind of what's going on with the social distancing, this was a good question from Rusty. So how do you make children understand why they can't go out and play with their friends and do so without scaring them? Um, really, I think that if we stick to the facts, um, it, 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 it isn't as scary for kids. Um, it's really more something that they're doing to protect, to protect everybody in their community. So the more people that do stay home and don't interact with their friends, uh, keep their space from other people and don't congregate in groups, the less people will get sick in general overall. 
I don't think there's any way to completely keep kids from being scared of what's going on. Um, but um, on the back end, probably then saying, you know, these are the things that we're doing to protect ourselves from this. We're not going to the store as often. We're washing our hands more frequently and making sure that it's nice and warm water. It's 20 seconds every single time that we do it. And if we do all these things, um, we are very unlikely to get it. And if we're very unlikely to get it, we're kind of, we're helping to protect everybody else in the community. So it's something that we're all getting together as, um, as a city and um, as a state, as a country to do, to protect one another. Um, and it seems maybe an abstract concept, but I think that um, kids, uh, depending upon what age they are, they, are, they do get into um, helping the world um, and helping other people at quite a young age. And these are values that are in either their church organizations, their Boy Scout organizations at school. So framing it in that way is, is, is helpful. Would be helpful to them. Um, okay, let's see. There are a couple other questions on here. If you're jumping on, we are answering your questions. We're talking right now to Dr. Eric Spiegel, a pediatric psychiatrist at St. Louis Children's Hospital. So if you have any questions that you want to ask, be sure to leave them in this Facebook Live, and I'll get to as many as I can here. Um, Susan Zimmer says, tell kids the truth according to their age and mental capacity. Do you think that there's a way that you can tell different age groups different things to make them more comfortable with, with what's going on? Um, I think that uh, the best way to do it is to think about what, in, in what way would they learn uh, different concepts other than this? And would it be more of a storybook um, uh, that would have kind of an explanation of within a story, like say kindergarten, first grade, or would it be something that they want to um, getting into middle school or, or high school, wanting to do a little research to learn about on their own and then discuss with family members. Um, again, I think that the key is to start with where they are. What is it that they understand so far? And what is it that they don't understand? Or what, what, um, what questions do they have? You want to be open to answering their questions and as honest as you can be about that, because you want to be trusted um, as a parent about things. Um, that being said, there's such a thing as over information overload. I think all of us as adults have experienced information overload with regard to um, this pandemic in the past couple of weeks. And we realized, you know, we don't have to watch or read the news in its entirety every single day to be informed. And that at a certain point, it becomes uh, more anxiety provoking to have too much information about what's going on in the world. Um, in that, in that case, it's helpful to look at some of the positive things that are coming out of this, like, for example, uh, the clusters of, um, uh, places where this, uh, stay at home orders have caused flattening of the curve so that we are already doing what we need to do. We are, um, st starting to have an effect that we want to see and that that's positive and that. If that's the case, and if we keep doing it, there'll be an end in sight. So um, making sure that we look towards the future and what that will be like, um, um, that this won't always be this way. Yeah, and as we're looking towards the future, everyone's schedules to some extent have been disrupted. So Allison is asking, how do we deal with the temper tantrums that are happening due to the changes in schedule? She says her toddler is completely out of sorts being out of school. Yeah, I mean, think I think to a certain extent, we just accept that some kids um, really crave routine more than others. And some kids really crave that social interaction more than others. And so um, trying to figure out with the toddler that's having a temper tantrum, trying to figure out what's the main emotion behind this. Is it is it um, frustration or anger or sadness? And really trying to label that for kids. I, you, you're missing your friends and right now you'd be with them and that's making you sad. And that makes sense to mom, that makes sense to dad. Um, a, a really important skill 
uh, for any parent is to try to um, give a, a voice and a name to the feelings that kids are having and then to validate those feelings. One of our um, impulses probably is to jump to, well, you'll get to see your friends again soon, or we'll go back to school uh, sometime in the future. And I know I just said looking to the future is important, but before we get there, we want to validate, you know, this is, this is hard. And I understand that you're going to have some negative feelings about it. That being said, um, lots of parents are doing the best they can to create some kind of structure at home, some kind of predictability. And if that has to do with um, there's a certain time of the day for school, there's a certain time of the day for waking up, we're having trying to have meals at the same times. Um, maybe we get on um, one of our tablets or devices and do a video chat with a friend or play a game with a friend at a certain time in the day. It, you know if your child is one of those kids that really craves that rigid structure and, and trying to give them as best you can within reason, knowing that you also are uh, either working for home or have a lot of other things to juggle. But doing your best to try to do that without... <clears throat> without overdoing it or beating yourself up if you're not able to do that all the time. Um, as I said at the beginning, taking care of yourself is really important too. Yeah, I wanted to actually go back to that at the beginning. You talked a lot about how parents' anxiety and parents' stresses can um, kind of latch onto the children and that's where they can have these issues. What can parents be doing right now to help alleviate some of the stress for their kids? Well, I always tell parents that um, parents that well back when we all used to fly on airplanes every once in a while that the when the oxygen masks drop, you're supposed to put yours on first and then put your child's on because you don't want to pass out trying to put your child's mask on. And um, another metaphor I use is you can't you know put out a fire with a completely empty bucket. And both of those point to how are you doing? You can't spend your entire day trying to make things perfect and take care of your kids and deal with their school and make this schedule that I'm mentioning and give them activities and all of those things. Uh, you do have to connect with your friends, try to talk to your therapist. If your therapist is um, online, um, making sure that you're taking care of your physical health, making sure that everybody gets outside, gets some sun, um, and um, doing the things that make you feel uh, more normal, more grounded. Uh, some people meditate, some people pray. Um, other people are, are trying to spend some time, you know, creating art, whether it's learning a new instrument or trying to, you know, make a collage or paint or something like that. But not because you want to enrich your, your children's lives all the time, but also because it's something that you're interested in. Um, and that you're uh, having some joy in your life and some time to yourself. If you have a partner that's helping you raise your kids, uh, can they be with the kids for a time while you go get some solitude, if that's something that you need? I mean, you probably know, what was it like before all this, and how did I take care of myself, and what are those things have fallen by the wayside? Even the basic of, am I getting enough sleep? Am I eating somewhat healthy? Am I relying too much on... Um, caffeine or alcohol, really kind of trying to think of this more of a, of a marathon than a sprint, uh, where your own health, mental health is really important. Take care of yourself too in there. This is a good question also, and I think important to talk about. Um, Jacqueline Kerber Blaine says that she has a handicapped child. He just doesn't understand what's going on. She says he's nonverbal and all he does is scream. She's having a really hard time with it. Any suggestions? Well, um, I think that for that child, probably reaching out to <clears throat> who the who that child supports were beforehand. Some schools have been doing their best to figure out what is the role of um, educators and also special educators given this time. Um, in addition, I've had patients who have had um, visits or virtual visits with therapists, physical therapists, occupational therapists, really maybe those were helpful in the past and 
they weren't there for a while, like re reaching out to those services and seeing are they doing some sort of a new uh, virtual visit or do they have recommendations based on their knowledge of their child. Um, that being said, um, trying to normalize the schedule and the day as much as possible to what fits for that child is, is best and um, give them a variety of experiences. It is really challenging, you know, if, if the child can't understand at all why this is happening, um, but you can still validate that, you know, you're really frustrated with what's going on. And I understand that um, a lot, uh, you know, it, it makes sense that you'd be frustrated. Okay, uh, we do have to wrap up here in just a few minutes. I wanted to give you a chance to kind of uh, give us an overall look or anything we didn't touch on that maybe you wanted to talk about. Um, I guess with the, the schedule, one other thing that I would say is that there's no cookie cutter one way to do it. So if you look online and you see social media showing you people who seem to be having it perfectly together with their schedule and their online schooling, um, that may not be what works for your family. So trial and error and figuring out what works for you. A uh, fun thing is to still keep special time special. So are there special fun things that you only do on weekends or evenings with your kids that may make things feel a little bit more normal? Um, and then also just again, be very open to um, your children if they have uh, feelings of grief or anxiety at this time and uh, listen to them hear them out, try not to uh, make it better right away, but to, to really um, make sure you understand it and, and that they feel heard because they are going to feel overwhelmed, stressed, and all, any number of negative emotions from time to time. And, and you're, you being there for them and setting the tone and listening and understanding them is a very, very important stabilizing feature for them in this time. Dr. Spiegel, I do appreciate you taking the time with us this afternoon. I hope that it was helpful for everybody who was watching. I'm sure that it was to get some of those answers or those questions answered rather. So coming up tomorrow at 1.30 right here on Facebook Live, uh, we'll be talking with a financial expert specifically about the unemployment numbers, those small business loans, as well as gas prices. So that's tomorrow about this time, 1.30 right here on Facebook Live. We'll have that expert for you. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Samantha Jones for News 4. We'll see you later.